Welcome to part three. This is the final part of a three-part series doing a video version of my BTS Thursday. Let's jump right in. The first thing I do when I get colors back from Becca Kinsey, very talented artist who does my flats for me, is I create three separate layers of values. One is the base color, uh, which is the blue, uh, purple, it's my favorite thing for shadows, and yellow I tend to use for highlights. I then put these three layers in a group and I use a masking layer separating the foreground and background element. What you just saw there is me basically duplicating the same set of shadows and inversing it or inverting it rather. So that way I have a set both for the foreground and for the background. I like coloring this way because often I'm, I'm not certain what color scheme I'm gonna use. So this allows me to render uh, the values without committing to a specific color. I promise in future videos, I will get around to doing a proper video about masking layers. It's, it's pretty life-changing for me once I started using it. I find it easier to really just focus on the highlights and work from dark to light. So what you're seeing here is it's actually me just working on the masking layer. If you look closely at my layers, I'm not ac I didn't actually select the layer with the highlight color on it. I'm actually rendering right on the masking layer. It's funny because uh, you know when you think of masking layers, it's it, it sounds very mathematical or or a mechanical or a, or a mechanical way to color. For me, it's just a liberating way to color because then I don't have to worry about committing to a specific color and I can just focus on the values. Like you can see here, I'm literally just creating where the highest highlight would be. And um, working this way just, yeah, it just allows me to really just focus on one thing at a time. When I started coloring my work, I actually found it very overwhelming because uh, number one, there was so much about color theory that I didn't fully understand and it took me a while to really get a grasp of how to properly color my work. In a lot of ways, similar to when I started inking my own artwork, I realized I, I couldn't ink the way I penciled. You know, I, re I realized that the way I penciled was um, it was very different because they're completely different mediums. So when I'm penciling, I almost feel like a different artist, especially if someone else is inking it. But when I'm inking my own work, I tend to pencil very loosely and do a lot of the finishes with the inks. Pencils and inks are two completely different mediums. And it's the same thing with colors. I wanted to take advantage of the fact that I am doing the colors and actually and actually use the opportunity that I have to fill out some of the gaps that's missing or rather some of the things that I can enhance by being the one who's in charge of coloring my own work. So once I establish the highlights, the second thing I do is I start creating the shadows. So, you know, it, it sounds cheesy and it's something that's like all inspirational, but uh, you know when they say that uh, it's always uh, darkest before the dawn and it's kind of like that with coloring as well. Um, when you look at the way things are lit, especially when there's a, a very strong highlight. The darkest part of the object actually isn't the furthest 
part uh, from the light. It's actually the part of the object that is closest to the light that is the darkest. So what I'm doing here is, aside from establishing some of the shadows, I'm actually reinforcing those highlights. When I color, I try to keep things simple and I tend to choose a, a one directional lighting. You know, every, every now and then I will throw secondary lighting just to create a better sense of depth. But for the most part, I, I really just try to keep things simple. I, I find that, you know, the, the more I learn, I realize um, it's actually very difficult to simplify. And I find, you know, when I'm able to communicate an image or a story properly with fewer lines or fewer words, I find it very satisfying. So as you can see, my shadow layer, um, it's set to multiply. It's usually at around like 40 or so percent. Uh, right now it's, it's funny because I, I really like how it's blue. And every time I turn off that layer and I can see what it look, what the true colors look like, it, it doesn't feel as appealing to me to be honest because there's, there's too many colors. And that's one of the things that uh, I dislike about working on team books is that it's, it's very hard to create a proper composition color wise because all of their costumes are so vibrant and everyone's color scheme is so different from each other. So I find that turning on a blue layer like this while I work in the shadow, again, it's, it's simplifying things and it makes things easier for me to visually understand and really just focus on one thing. Another favorite of mine uh, in terms of rendering is uh, now, you know, this is a quick little tip. If you're using Photoshop, simply I use a round brush and when you go to the mode and you, you just set it to dissolve and when you set it to dissolve, it does like this speckling kind of thing, which I really like. Uh, I, I prefer it over super smooth airbrushy look. An old studio mate of mine, uh, Nimit Malavia, he's actually the one that showed me that technique. And it really comes in handy when you're doing um, basically one or two color screen prints because it doesn't have those uh, gradations of value. It's really just two tones. The soft round brush set to dissolve, uh, those little dots from far away, it, it looks like there's a gradation of value and really, when you look really close, it's actually just little dots. After I finish the rendering, uh, I'll then go back in and change and tweak some of the colors uh, just to give it a little bit more harmony. And every now and then, as you can see, I'll, I'll forget to draw a leg or something. <laughs> it's a little bit hard to see when it's in black and white, but once you color it, uh, you, you can really see the mistakes. 
Another thing I like to do to create depth is I'll add a clipping mask layer on top of my inks and I'll start colorizing the, the, the solid blacks to help push it back. I tend to use all of my harsh lighting on a separate layer. Usually it's set to screen or normal. Everything is really focused on creating depth. So by putting it on top of my line work, I'm able to really push things back further. So what I'm doing now is just adding a secondary color. Um, I figured since it's very uh, warm from the top, I would create some cooler values reflecting from the ground. You know, they're in a very clinical, technological base, I guess. So I figured the cool blues would be reflecting off of all the, all the metal surfaces. I'm hoping that these little videos give you a little bit of a reprieve from the realities of the time that we're living in. And stay safe out there. These are crazy times. I walked you guys through from my layout to my pencils, to my inks and colors. And hopefully this is something that you guys enjoy. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next week.